What is up, everybody? Welcome into this Saturday edition of the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Pack a Day Podcast. This is, as you know, a 365 day a year Packers dedicated show where I'm going to come and talk to you for about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes every day about some Packers related topic. And hopefully that's why you're tuning in and have hopefully subscribed and liked and all of those sort of things, which I appreciate greatly. But every once in a while, I have to go off the beaten path just a little bit and talk maybe about something that's related to the Packers, but with a slight degree of difference. And today, that's going to be one of those days. I'm going to be talking about primarily the Detroit Lions. Now, this is still relevant to the Packers, right? Because anytime you are in the same division, the Bears, the Lions, the Vikings always very much matter what they are doing. Um, I've covered the Bears a little bit already this offseason, but this was a really interesting week for the Detroit Lions. And coupled with their earlier decision with the Matthew Stafford trade for Jared Goff, I'm here to tell you that you don't need to worry about the Lions for the foreseeable future. First of all, the Dan Campbell hire in and of itself, I have some major questions about. We'll see how that plays out. I'm not confident in it. Let's let's start by saying that. But maybe he ends up being a great coach. We'll, we'll, we'll see and time will tell. But I want to talk about the offseason that they've had so far because there's things that I'm looking at as I try to, again, put my GM goggles on as best as I can that just make absolutely zero sense with what the Lions have done so far this offseason. So I think we have to start here by looking at if you're the if you're the Detroit Lions general manager, what what what's the current state of the team? What is your goal? What are you trying to achieve, right? So let, let's always start by ta- talking about the core of the team and, and specifically here for the Lions, who are your 25, 26 and under talent that you're going to build around long term? So for the Lions, you're looking at Jeffrey Okuda, DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkinson, Kerryon Johnson, Frank Ragnall, Julian Aquara, Jonah Jackson. That's kind of it. All right. That's first of all not enough. They, they don't have enough, you know, high end players. They got a couple nice interior offensive linemen, Ragnow and, and Jonah Jackson, both really nice players. A tight end who certainly could come into his own at some point. That I know a lot of Packer fans, myself included, were very interested uh, in the Packers drafting when they selected, you know, Rashawn Gary. Obviously, the Lions took Hawkinson before Gary. Um, two running backs, Carryon Johnson, DeAndre Swift. Okay, you know, certainly Swift is a really nice player, as is Johnson, but you're not building a franchise around that. Jeffrey Okuda, a lot of people really liked him in the draft last year. He really, really struggled uh, for the for the Lions. Julia, Julian Aquara is a nice player. That's not enough, right? You don't have a core that you can build around. And their veterans is even more of a nightmare, especially with what they're paying and some of those deals are difficult to get out of. Trey Flowers is a really ugly contract. You know, they got Taylor Decker, which the contract's not great. They're not in a good position. Plus Kenny Galladay potentially leaving. We'll see what happens there. My point being here is that, you know, I know it's always tough to hear the word rebuild, but when you look at this Lions roster, you have to at least look at it and say, we're not ready to compete. And we've got to figure out something where we can get an influx of young talent that we can surround around some of those guys that we like already who are still young and talented, but we don't have those top end young players. Like even if you look at the Packers, right? It's of course a team that's dedicated around Bakhtiari and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams and those type of players. But Jair Alexander, Rashawn Gary, Darnell Savage, Kenny Clark, like you've got some some high end uh, young talented players, especially in Clark and Alexander, for example, who are on that 24, 25 year age mark, who are super high end players at their particular position, Elton Jenkins, so on and so forth. So Detroit doesn't have that. And then the veterans aren't there to match what Green Bay has as a veteran team either. So this is a team, long story short, that is a ways away. And their cap situation is not that dissimilar coming into the season, not that dissimilar from what the Green Bay Packers was. They have to get, they're still over the cap at this point. They still have to figure out ways to get under that salary cap. So they've got a similar cap situation without the winning, without the good veterans, without the, the core young talent that they really need to compete. So how anyone could look at this and say, we've got to do you know anything but rebuild and reshuffle and start building more towards youth and, and getting some high-end young players in blows my mind, all right? So I want to start there. So let's start then next with 
the Matthew Stafford trade because if reports are true, and I believe them to be, it sounds like Detroit had two real options here. They could have gone with the, the LA Rams trade, which gets them Jared Goff, two first round picks and a third round pick. And on paper, that might sound better, but let me give you what the, the Panthers competing offer was reported to be. Teddy Bridgewater, the number eight overall pick this year, and a future fifth round pick. And you might be saying, well, if I had to choose between Goff and Bridgewater, either it's a toss up, or maybe I'd take the younger guy in Goff who maybe has uh, maybe a little bit more ceiling than, than Bridgewater is at this point. We know what Bridgewater is. At least Goff is still young. Maybe you get him in another system and he can compete. And I'd rather have two first rounders than one first rounder and a third rounder rather than a fifth rounder. But the Rams aren't giving up their pick this year because they already traded away that pick for Jalen Ramsey. So you're getting picks in 2022 and 2023 for those first rounders. And you just traded a good team with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and a bunch of other high-end players, a good coach and Sean McVay. The one thing they were missing, a quarterback. They get Matthew Stafford now instead of, uh, instead of Jared Goff, which of course is a very big upgrade. And with that, in all likelihood, comes two 20-ish overall picks, probably like what, 24, 26, 28, you know, somewhere in that range over the course of the next two seasons. So you're not getting a premium pick. And even if you had the opportunity to trade now those two picks, you know, the, the 24th and the 20, or, you know, the Rams next two first round picks and that third round pick to try to get up as high as you could this year, I guarantee you, you're not getting in the top eight of the draft by trading those picks away. No way. And then if you, the, the other thing, that's really important to look at here is you might say, you know, I'd rather have Goff than Bridgewater because Goff is younger and maybe has a little bit more upside. Goff has a much higher contract, not much higher, but a higher enough contract that it's worth noting. And Goff, you're going to have to keep for two seasons under contract based on how it's structured. With Teddy Bridgewater, you can get out of it after this first year. And, and next year in, in 2022, you release him and there's no cap hit whatsoever. So it is a much more palatable contract. That third round pick that they took on is basically to take on, in a lot of ways, that Jared, uh, that Jared Goff contract. So the, to me, they, they erred major in, in not taking that Panthers pick because number eight pick in this draft, they already have pick number seven. Now you've got two top 10 picks in this draft that you can immediately start building that top end talent and potentially getting one of those quarterbacks to start building around. Bridgewater can start this year, and now you can develop a quarterback, maybe a Trey Lance, maybe a Mac Jones, if you stay at that spot, and then they can take over next year or when they're ready. However, how about, you know, are the are the Jets turning around pick seven, you know, turning down pick seven and pick eight for the second pick in the draft? I'm not sure they do, and especially if you sweeten that pot a little bit, maybe add in a DeAndre Swift or a Carrion Johnson, something like that for the second pick. And now all of a sudden you have a Zach Wilson? Or what about the Dolphins at pick three? They've already got Tua as their quarterback of the future. Unless they swing something for Deshaun Watson, I guarantee you that they're going to be willing to probably trade pick three for pick seven and eight. And maybe you even get something back in that deal. And now you can, at minimum, get either Justin Fields or Zach Wilson, who's ever there left, and really have a potential top end quarterback for the future of your team that you can build around and start building around, well, Teddy Bridgewater starts this year, and now you've got your quarterback of the future. Or again, you could stay at pick seven and eight, maybe get one of the top offensive tackles, then get either a, you know, maybe a Trey Lance or a Matt Jones, a Mac Jones, excuse me, and then, you know, pair them with Bridgewater for a year, give them some time to develop, or maybe even keep Bridgewater for both of those seasons for a little bit more time to develop. But that's how you start building this top end talent right now, right away when you need it. There's no point in bringing in Jared Goff as a potential future guy. And oh, by the way, I can promise you right now, Jared Goff going from Sean McVay to Dan Campbell is not getting better. There's no way where like Sean McVay just couldn't figure it out, but all of a sudden he goes to Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions and things click and he's ready to be a top quarterback. That I can promise you right now is not happening. So I like that Panthers deal a whole heck of a lot more. And I think it would have set them up for better success, but that I could have lived with. The Rams deal I could live with to some extent. But then a couple minor moves this week that just blow my mind. So the Lions go out. Remember, they're already over the cap. And they signed Tyrell Williams, the wide receiver who was released by the Raiders, to a one-year deal up to $6.2 million. Now, Tyrell Williams is a nice receiver, but he missed all of 2020 with an injury. 
He just turned 29 years old. In 2019, he had 16 games that he played, 42 catches, 651 yards, and six touchdowns, which is fine. And I don't even care if he's a good player. The point being here is that what we just talked about, the Detroit Lions are not ready to compete this season. They're just not. You're not competing for a Super Bowl. You're probably not competing for a playoff spot. What is the upside in giving a $6 million plus contract, potentially, I'm sure there's incentives baked in and whatever, to a receiver who's coming off a season ending injury, who's 29 years old. And even if he kills it, even if he's awesome, he's 29 years old, you're not winning it this year. And now you've got a 30 year old and are you going to sign him to another big deal? There's no upside there. If you're going to sign players to you know deals with any sort of decent money, they better be 23, 24, 25, and try to front load the hell out of that deal so that when they're young, you know they're still young, and when you actually have a window open to potentially compete, they're not making as much money, and they're still young and they're still talented. A Curtis Samuel, for example, like somebody who's still what 24 years old, I just talked about yesterday. That makes sense for Detroit because he could still be good three, four years from now. And if you front load the hell out of it, they don't have the cap to do that per se. But if you can front load it and pay him less later, those are the type of deals you have to look at. Not 29-year-old, one-year, $6 million wide receivers that are you know missed the last season and aren't going to help you with any sort of championship window because they're not competing this year. It makes zero sense whatsoever. And you might say, Andy, what does a $6 million deal matter, right? Like they're going to have to fill out a roster. Jared Goff needs some weapons to see if he can be. Yeah, right. But like $6 million, even if you just don't offer that deal whatsoever, right? $6 million carries over into next season. And you sign enough of those deals that you're just like, oh, we're just going to fill out our roster with these type of guys. Again, there's no upside. You'd rather, if you're the Lions, you'd rather an undrafted free agent play all those snaps at wide receivers or Quintez Cephas, their rookie from last year from Wisconsin. You'd rather those guys play those snaps to see if you find a hidden gem or to see if you can grow those type of players. Tyrell Williams just takes snaps from younger players who are going to be on your team three, four years from now, potentially when you're trying to compete. So that deal makes zero sense whatsoever. And why are you outbidding teams for Tyrell Williams if you're the Detroit Lions at this point in the season? Like, this is supposed to be an unprecedented offseason where all these veterans are getting cut and released and you have an opportunity to get players at you know bargain basement prices. Tyrell Williams at $6 million for one season is not that. Like hold off just a little bit longer and see. And, and if all of a sudden, you know, Tyrell Williams is going for three million or a similar player is going for three million at the end of free agency and you want to get an extra weapon, fine. So be it. Do what you want. It's still dumb, but go for it. But th this is not the type of deal that you want to be doing. And then finally, they just restructured Jamie Collins. Now, to be fair to the Lions, they do need to get under the cap and give themselves some breathing room to make some moves, sign their draft class, and so on and so forth. But Jamie Collins is the last type of player that you want to be extending out and putting future dead cap hits towards. He is 32 years old this season, and restructuring him puts more money towards the future and makes you keep him for this year, potentially even next year. And that's not what you want to be doing. You're better off just cutting him now with a post June 1st designation, saving a couple million and not having any cap in the future. And I know the idea of just nuking portions of your team um, is, is a tough pill to swallow for some fan bases. But if you're the Lions, there's no benefit. You're like them keeping Jamie Collins and, ex and extending that out and signing Tyrell Williams and taking on Jared Goff's bad contract. Like, this is going to be another four and 12 Lions team. Like, just pure, it's going to be in that realm. Maybe they get to six and 10 and overachieve. Kudos. Well done. It doesn't get you anything. In fact, it potentially gets you even a worse draft pick. And yes, I'll end with this. There is a point to trying to win football games and trying to dig your franchise out of this consistent cycle of losing over and over and over. But if the difference is between a 3-13 and 13 season and a 6-10 and 10 season, you just can't be making these decisions and you've got to figure out ways to get your core of your team younger and better and not make decisions that help you no, in no way, shape, or form try to win a championship. And if you're the Lions, you've got to figure out a way to open up windows further down the line when you actually have a chance. Because right now is not that time. And these deals for Jamie Collins and Jared Goff and Tyrell Williams do the antithesis of what you should be trying to do in this situation. These type of moves just irk me to no end. But as a Packer fan, you can rejoice in the fact that, you know what? The Lions are still going to be the Lions. Detroit's going to Detroit. And you don't have to worry about that team for the foreseeable future. 
The Bears, the the Vikings, they can continue to be a pain in the ass, but the Lions can continue to be the bottom feeder that they are because they don't know what they're doing in the front office level. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful, safe, and happy weekend. I'll be right back here tomorrow. Make sure to subscribe if you have not already and check out our audio podcast wherever you get your favorite podcast. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go.